hello thank you for watching my channel today my name's Sarah and my channel is called your true shelf today I am doing my weekly um catch up video for what I've been um reading what I've finished what I'm currently reading what I'm reading next um so this week I'm pleased to announce I have bought zero books I haven't added anything so if I'm a bit out of puff I just legged it up the stairs I haven't added anything to my TBR which is a first probably not a first but you know it doesn't happen very often so that's good um and then so let's talk about what I finished this week so I finished two things this week the first thing was a um an audible which um was free it was called the diary of a Hansley girl by Ambreen Razia so she wrote it's a play um it's a play with just um there's probably a word for this but with just the one there's just the one uh actor in the play so she reads the play and she wrote the play and um she is she is a Muslim woman and she's writing what it's like um, growing up in Hounslow, which I think is quite a Muslim area from what she said in London. And it um, follows a character who is 16 and she's called Shahida. And Shahida is struggling with a kind of um, being a Muslim woman in a modern day London. So her family are from Pakistan, they're pretty traditional. And there's lots of um, sort of cultural heritage and stuff that she has from her family. And so she's also then torn with um, like her friends at school and stuff because her friends um, are not, the, the two, her two best friends aren't Muslim and um, they are kind of um, leading a different life to how Shahida's family wants her life to be. And so it's, she's kind of torn between the two and it's quite hard for her and she gets involved with this boy who it's really obvious that he's bad news and she really loves him and she's kind of having to keep the whole thing as a secret from her family and we know from the start of the play that she's running from something and the acting was fantastic it's only the whole play is like an hour and a half long um it's just it was just really good how it talks about the conflict of what it was like for Shahida to have these sort of two conflicting cultures and what and how she how she was um trying to live her life and how her family wanted her to live her life and um, it was just fantastic. I'd really highly recommend it. And I gave that one four stars. And then the other thing that I read was a massive disaster. So the other thing I read, I did as a buddy read with Kieran of KD Book. And he's reading the whole of the book along list and he's doing a book a week. And we decided to buddy read The New Wilderness by Diane Cook. And I was really excited about this book when the shortlist came out. I thought it sounded fantastic. And I was so disappointed. I really didn't like this book. So under normal circumstances, I would have DNF'd. But because it was a buddy read, we both decided to like go on to the bitter end. And um, so the premise of the book sounds really good. So it's basically um, a group of set in the future in sort of a post-apocalyptic type um, world. And um, it's in America. It's in, in, They talk a lot about the city. So the city is um, completely overrun. There's um, not enough food. There's not enough space. Um, there's there's illness, there's a lot of pollution, so it, it got to the point where people are finding it really difficult to live there. And our main character, B, has a daughter, Agnes, who is about five, um, and Agnes is basically dying of um, lung disease because her lungs can't hack the pollution. And so B decides with her husband, Glenn, that they're going to move to um, the wilderness state, which is a new state that the government have opened up for 20 people only to live in a social experiment of what it's like to live in a rewilded area. And so they move there with 17 other people and Agnes's health just gets better and better until she's completely healthy. And we pick up at the story at that point um, and we learn a bit about the, um, the characters who are living there and what it's like to live in the sort of a communal group and um, when there's certain people who want to take the lead and other people who want to have a democracy and um, what it's like when jobs needed to be divided up and when people get sick and all that kind of thing. 
So I thought, well, this sounds super interesting because I'm really interested in that kind of um, communal living and that sort of thing. But I wasn't. <laughs> so it starts off like there's trigger warning for um, stillbirth right at the beginning. It's a very emotional scene about stillbirth. And um, then one of the characters in the first couple of pages is killed straight away in a in a water accident. And Kieran and I both said, like, oh, we didn't really feel anything about that because we didn't know the character. But maybe, you know, we'll, we'll learn more about it as it goes on. But you don't. And you never get to know the characters. Like, so Agnes, the little girl, you get to know her. She's the best character. And the second half of the book is narrated from her point of view. But the other characters, you either don't get to know them at all. You don't get to know about their previous life about their backgrounds, about their viewpoints. You just get to know them in kind of very brief conversations so you don't care about them at all. And um, you, the most of the book is then walking from place to place, from place to place, but not written beautifully. There's no like lovely nature writing or anything to carry it along. And you get these occasional dramatic scenes which last about a page and then it just goes back to nothing again. And... Um, Kieran said it was kind of like a David Attenborough documentary, but without the visuals or the music, just David Attenborough kind of talking about what's happening and lots of waiting for the moment when something happens. Like, you know, the camera must be sitting there for hours waiting for this thing to happen. So he said, like, it, that I thought was accurate, you know, like you've got no sound, no visuals, but you're just waiting for something to happen and waiting for something to happen. And then it happens itself really quickly and then you're just back to waiting for something to happen again. Uh, and then, so the other element of this book is there are these rangers... And the rangers are kind of like the guards of the wilderness state, and they keep making the um, the uh, the people move along and make sure they don't leave any rubbish or any signs of where they've been. And they sort of have check-ins with them all the time. And and then we keep hearing about this kind of: can we trust the rangers? Are there more people who are living here than we know? Um, are the people sneaking in? Um, is this all going to be over one day, and then we have to go somewhere else? And that kind of thing. And then there's this sort of really difficult relationship between Agnes and her mother, B, um, which is sort of explored a little. Um, but I was just so let down by this book. It was so dry, so boring. Um, I think it could have been so much more, either by making the writing more beautiful or um, by get, letting us know the characters, because I just we just didn't know them. So I gave it, I think, probably one and a half stars I would give it, which is definitely the lowest book I've rated all year um yeah and I was really disappointed I really don't know why it's on the booker shortlist but I guess um other people have given it a five stars on goodreads so maybe it's just not my thing and Kieran's thing but I'd be if anyone else has read this I would love to hear what you think because I haven't seen anyone else talk about this book on booktube at all um the only people I've, I've well, the only other person I've discussed with is Kieran but I haven't I haven't um had anyone else talk about this so if you've read it please tell me what you think because i'd love to hear someone else's point of view and um yeah i'm hoping eric lonesome reader will be reading it soon um in which case um i'd really like to hear what he has to say so that was what i've read this week and then what i'm currently reading i feel like there's a sneeze coming there we go <clears throat> um so talking about what i am currently reading so, some change, some no change. So I've started a new book, um, which was the first one that I'm reading off my October TBR. It's not October yet. It's actually the 27th, I think. Is it 27th? Yeah, 27th of September. But I'm starting a buddy read tomorrow, so I just wanted something small to um, to put in the gap. And that is um, this one, The Lady in the Licking Glass by Virginia Woolf. So this is a collection of um, five short stories. It's one of their little Penguin Modern Classics um, tiny books. There's only 75 pages. I'm going to use it for my um, book of less than 100 pages in my Reading Women's Challenge. Um, I'm just finishing the second story. And uh, so far, so good. So the first story is um, The Lady in the Looking Glass. And then the second story is called A Society. And The Lady in the Looking Glass is basically... Um, about a uh, woman who's standing in someone else's hallway and she's looking in the in the in the mirror in the hall and she's looking at what she can see reflected back to her and she's interpreting that and then it kind of all shatters at the end and then the second story is about a group of young women who think that 
women are just in the world to bear children and that men do everything amazing in the world you know they're the ones who have the intelligence and the creativity and the exploring nature and they yeah they write all the books and they do everything and then they decide that actually maybe they're wrong and and they decide to all um have uh, a role in investigating this theory and then they come back together and say what they found out and that's kind of like a satire which is it's amusing so that's the two that I've read so far and there's three more which I'll probably finish this today I should imagine then I am I've read a bit more of Happy by Fern Cotton so I am only I think I've only got about 50 pages left and I'm currently reading the section on families and I think the next section is on gratitude and that might be the last section but it's still really good I'm still I still like maintain it's a dip in and out of book um I'm reading it all in order I'm not sort of reading a page here and a page there but um but yeah you know there's exercise and different things to do in here and so it's not a book that you sit down and read all in one go but I, I really recommend it and I think she's done a great job at kind of evidence basing um her um her work she hasn't filled it with references or anything but you can tell she's researched this a lot before she's written it and um, so I still really recommend this. I have read a little bit more of Expedition by Steve Backshaw. Um, yeah, it's like I've got the dust jacket on, but I've read a little bit more of this one. And um, so I finished the first exploration that he's done now, which was in, in Mexico, um, diving in caves that have been unexplored and the kind of scary things that happen when they're doing it. And it's ancient Mayanix, which is um, going to be really interesting. And then the good news is, so last time I filmed this video, I was listening to The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary and I was saying how I think I was going to, I made DNF, I wasn't enjoying it. And there's been a complete turnaround. I'm absolutely loving it now. So I'm listening to the Audible. The premise of The Flat Share is there's um, Tiffy and Leon are our main characters and Leon's a nurse he works nights and Tiffy works at a as an editor at, at a press which publishes books about crafts and um, Tiffy lives in the flat in the daytime sorry Tiffy lives in the flat in the evenings and at weekends and Leon lives at, in the flat um, just in, at, in the daytime because he works nights as a nurse and so they're flatmates who've never met each other and they communicate via post-it notes which they leave around the house and the post-it notes are pretty amusing. Leon has a brother who's in prison for a crime that we're told that he hasn't committed and there's also um, so different dynamics are coming into this now and from what started as a fairly kind of yeah what, mm, kind of story I've now really got drawn into the story I love the relationship between Leon and Tiffy, um, the communication between them. I love um, hearing about Tiffy's work at the um, the book uh, publishers and there's lots of talk about crafts and I love crafts, so that's really good. Um, there's um, talk, I think there's representation about um, abusive relationships in here as well, which I really wasn't expecting, um, which is getting interesting and there's lots about female friendship and I just I'm really really loving it it's really cozy I would probably take a you know accurate guess about what's going to happen I have got I think I'm about 60 percent through now and I really can't wait to listen I'm having to decide should I watch a booktube video or should I listen to the audio book because I'm really enjoying it. I'm finding it so uplifting so happy so cozy and I just love finding books like that so yes it's not a literary book but that doesn't matter it's like a contemporary romance I just love it and I'd highly recommend it I know that she's got another bit called The Switch which is currently 99p on Kindle but I'm thinking I think it's read by the woman who played um what's her name Marianne in Normal People and I can't remember the actress's name but I really liked her so I think I might get it on Audible instead but I'll have to listen to the sample and see so yeah so that's a really good turnaround I'm really happy that I didn't DNF it and that I carried on that's why I find it hard to DNF books because occasionally sometimes like the, the new wilderness it never got better and I could tell it was not going to get any better whereas this one I did I'm really glad I didn't DNF it because it really totally has got better now that I'm more into the story so that is my um, summary and then the last thing I'm going to start reading hopefully tomorrow with Heather from Soggy X Pack Bit Nerd 
is um, the Subtle Knife um, by Philip Pullman. So we read um, Northern Lights together last year and we're reading um, The Subtle Knife starting tomorrow, which I'm really looking forward to. So that's been my week in reading. So tell me about your week, tell me what you've read, what you've finished, what you're reading, what you've bought, any of those things would be good. Or if you've read any of the ones that I talked about, then let me know. And um, I will look forward to speaking with you soon. Bye.